we are here again looking at the word nurture and we are continuing to see how nurture <clears throat> in context of later, later life because I, I, I can't give you all but I hope I am worth your appetite enough to go and do some research or to go and read or to wait until I could develop a little more and bring it back to you maybe next six months maybe <laughs> because there's so much in it you see <clears throat> It may not be real if I just throw everything at you because I want you to think. I want you to go say, hey, parent, you're a parent. What does that mean? How do I really face a day-to-day -day experience? So, one of the things that's important that, uh, that we, we, we look at ourselves is how we are moving through. I, I don't think people realize that the year one changes to year two. I, I'll tell somebody that, that the year they, after 365 days, the number changes. And so it's important for us to see how we capture and manipulate those 365 days to get the other number, like from two to three to three to four, or from 10 to 11, or from 60 to 61. Uh, and that's what we want to look at today. Uh, the whole issue of we know those theories now one of the key things about development is, is knowledge that, that, that's the key thing and we have to see that knowledge is imperative in terms of how we move forward now where am I getting that from knowledge are we going to go to school <clears throat> nobody's talking here about school I'm talking about knowledge it's important for us to find the methodology that is very fundamental and basic. And may I say, N-U-R-T-U-R-E, nurture, is slash, not, maybe not slash, it's synonymous with H-O-M-E. <coughs> we, 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 we know that there's going to be a, a wider spectrum of, of the word nurture, but initially, in, in its foundational stages, we are dealing with H-O-M-E. Important for us to try to identify that that comes from what we call non-formative education as against the formative which starts maybe like what we call early childhood learning in at three and a half, three, two and a half, three years. But before that there is the continuum of what we see as a non-formative construct using this finger, this finger. We point, bring that to me, come here, go there. And the child follows your finger and then in hearing a word by sound. So bread has a sound as against butter, as against shoe, as against dress, as against table and chair, door, all those enunciated gives a sound that establishes a hearing here that gives a visual so if I hear that sound I put it in the visual that this finger established across there so when I hear shoe I can remember that so that, that sound two weeks ago coming to me when I saw that shoe so I know shoe now the child cannot spell s-h-o-e but the child will know what is an S-H-O-E. And so, it is important again to see the nurturing here, how we are developing the human child in the concept of the knowledge as they have been in their foundational stages being pointed to it. It's so unfortunate, by the time the child is two and a half to three, we take away the finger. Oh. May I say we use a pencil? Or a belt, oh, did I say belt? Yes, or a paddle. We stop using finger, and what happens there is that we begin to slow down the development. And we don't do it. And that's a whole different topic where we deal with discipline. But today, I want us to see the need for us to really establish the processes, the processes of knowledge as we teach the child through sound. S-O-U-N-D from the words and that's why how you articulate and how you enunciate and how you pronounce these words are important for the child's response because you got to note that in the first three months of that child's life 
basically every child has a mother because once the mother is alive or a parent or if not the grandparent because let's say for working purposes you get a three months vacation which starts of course before the child but you take extended or so, so at least for six to eight weeks the child will have you and then the child goes off to a nanny or the child goes off to another caregiver that caregiver is going to have its own enunciation and pronunciation and therefore the child is going to have a different concept of learning so the knowledge base is going to be affected again and when that child reaches two and a half that child goes to another caregiver called teacher and that teacher has its own enunciation and own pronunciation and therefore that child is going to have its own a different orientation of learning again so that, that the child's behavior is going to work in terms of the knowledge or the knowledge is going to be stimulating the brain for activity and by the time the child gets to five and goes into another learning environment with another self caregivers called more big school teachers or primary school teachers or grade school teachers, we are in another dilemma of operation where the child is being nurtured. Bring that word again nurtured from a different social context. So, you see, when we think that we are protecting. Or when we think we are really being that great parent and I'm not diminishing your parental skills I'm just saying there's a lot of ignorance in terms of how we transition our children within that learning frame of sound one of the other things that we don't realize that the child is exposed to is memory because the child is going to learn how to do things through memory. Hey, you, you harden. It's not that the child is not hearing you, that you have not realized that the child has initially not remembered how to work out this. You see, one of the things we have to look at, is it's how we are bringing in the learning concept far beyond just mouth and face or what we call face to face we have to see how we are bringing the child into learning from the entire social spectrum home yes and i spoke about that just now but i also mentioned granny i could go to relatives oh but, by the way siblings uh then, then we go to neighbors then we go to friends <laughs> It goes on, then we go to village. And then you hit in the, in the village, you have school. And in that school, there are different people coming in. So we have different egos to deal with, different personalities. All the way, basic, let me correct that. All the time, your child is being nurtured. Your child is being oriented to all these experiences. And yet when a child comes home, let's say, after school or you come home and be the child you want to tell the child what the child ought not to do when to do the child has learned to do it differently but with all these spectrums with all these dynamics how are we going to settle for what the child needs to learn as the child grows please bear with me here please bear with me we we, we are dealing therefore with the whole concept of that learning theory learning concept that comes out of a social fabric the finger the, the sound the sight I see I hear I pick up wherever I go I see I hear and then we can add the other senses like touch or smell so there's these reactionary psychological stimuli that is important for bringing that child into its development are we patient with that oh no 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 i tell you to do this you, you see you see what we do here is what we do here don't bring that from, from where where how can you tell the child don't bring what you learn from outside the child is more outside than inside by the time the child gets to three before three and if you were home with the child the child would have had you or you with the child for 24 7. now the child is going out from seven in the morning and coming back at three and then you come home at six or seven the child doesn't have much time but by the time the child eats it's time to sleep for the next day so that the child is learning from all these other different dynamics outside the house are we aware that we are not very much involved in child's learning process 
as we think we ought to be. But yet, our discipline and our established cultures, we want to enforce them rigidly without no recognizing the child is sometimes unaware. When we think about memory, as I early stated there, the memory is for what I would have done. So if I am state, if I am outside of the house more than I'm inside the house, my memory activation of long term or episodic memory is going to be for where, where, outside the house. And so the, the object of the, the the learning has now to bring come in to not just the social context. Let me draw it a little more here. We have to see the reality of what we're talking about in terms of cognition. Yes, thought. How do we get a child to think? How do we get a child to process thinking? That's a whole day's work, but uh, let, me, let me bring it down quickly here. What is thinking? What is thought processes? What is the whole issue here of me trying to develop a particular pattern? Why? You didn't eat, what happened? You're stupid. Have you used that word? Dotish? Foolish? You see, those three words, do, they, they ought not to be used, you know. Why? Because with the child is in a space where the child, is, on one hand, may be learning to think. On the other hand, the child is not allowed to think. And then the child is confused about thinking. The child is taught to think. Where? In school. Why? It's called formative. Why? It's structured. Particular time, one subject at a time. One concept. It's called mathematics or English. So everything is framed in that particular area. I can take in the information, I can process it, I can carry it into different dynamics of their varied uh, as, um, compositions and attributed to different specific situations, fine. I come home and there is nothing structured. Did I say that? I know you must be getting upset by now. No, no, don't get upset yet. I know you're going to say it's a bedtime, it's an eating time. But you see, we are thinking about, sorry, we are talking about thinking. Do you give the child one thing to think about at a particular time? That means, do we discuss one thing at a time? Is the child programmed to think? Let me tell you something. There is one part of a day in a child's life in the home where that is evident and ought to be it's called meal time why because we all ought to sit around a table focus on the very same foods so everybody plate has the same thing everybody is eating the same thing everybody is chewing the same thing so therefore there is a con Con, 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 well, how we call it, a focus on those things and we can have conversation about that food, conversation about the effects. That brings the child into thought process. So we can see the development of empty plates to full plates to empty plates. What does that mean? It means eating, it means digestion. So you, the child has a process. We could say, okay, you had carrot. It started off with a seed. There was a, it was planted, it grew. We could have so many conversations around that table, which in my estimate, I can call a classroom. You have a classroom right here. But alas, most of us may not have that kind of appreciation of the table and so that we don't talk about those things so oh by the way you eat he eats in his bedroom this one by the tv eat whatever no you see we need to see the, the whole context of education in its development that brings the child into that place of thought and thought development which brings us into that issue of cognition which has to do with the process of building building conversations that creates its own composition. 
You don't need to develop composition but a child have to go to lessons. If you will teach that child to think and to bring the process of development from this using the seed and you know in most primary schools we have somewhere to deal with the um, kidney bean the red bean you put it on the tissue paper and as we see it grow 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 g-r-o-w and that's the thing everything we do has a seed context and so it is important for us to realize the very essence of where we at and what we're doing in terms of how the child is developing let me finish this thing about knowledge so that here we are really not structured how again come inside you do homework hey clean the floor hey too much noise hey come here open your book back there is no processing there is no really continuum here it's all pieces of what you feel needs to be done what she wears now do this you had me do you recognize that sometimes when we parents give children instruction, it all is confusing? And that's why in the next se sector, the child is confused. Men say this, mommy say this, hey, you never say that too. Excuse me? Oh no, my friend saw that on television and they called me. You recognize that the child in a, in a classroom formative but the non-formative factors seem to mitigate there's a war going on in the psyche and we are calling all this human development we are calling all this learning how do we progress hey guys mommy daddy auntie uncle once you're involved in parenting in some cases wherever we have to look at that context again how we work with what we have you know serve us to prevent this some parents decide that one party would stay today i can't suggest say the mother would because their fathers will stay at home and that has this advantage great advantage of giving the child a proper structure 24 7 and there is a control in terms of how i work the social cultural dynamic so i know where you're going with whom you're going i will go with you i will teach you how to interface i will teach you how to talk i will teach you teach me daddy stay home daddy won't embarrass me oh daddy no i'm big enough. you are never big enough parents don't let the child control you as to where or not you need to be where they are so that you can help them to talk help them to speak help them i remember my son giving a testimony at his wedding actually sherry and saying would you believe that my father took me to kindergarten he took me to primary school he took me to secondary school and he took me to university yes and today he's a lecturer you know what he's able to talk because daddy was there helping him craft those words learn how to bring it out don't be afraid come on say it and so that from a very early age even going through teeth he was able to stand in front of audiences i'm telling you we have to be involved in their learning because their learning is not just about formative it's really life their learning is not just about passing an exam or getting it from kindergarten to university or to a big no it's about a constant experience of developing call again nurturing it's important for us to really redefine how we are establishing that by the time we the child gets into let, let's say nine six to nine and developing this their sense of identity and want to have this individualism and then by nine to, to 60 there is that concept now of learning to be much more innovative and i want to do things on my own and i want to be able to handle myself better and i, I and i have a brain and i'm feeling bright and we pass them through that assessment from primary to secondary and all of a sudden there's a whole four of uh, 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 of sort i don't know where i'm at because i didn't do well here but it's nothing not doing well it's that you may not have done well there where are you doing well and the parents need to know what areas of their children's development maximize their potentiality for learning and their potentiality as a person 
what it is about that child that he has special that brings him into this. I know for me, my father knew I was a talkist, a talker. My, my, my parents were, uh, were, were one, on one side, articulate both of them were, but were, my father had cho chose how he would do it. My mother chose nothing. She talked, she shared, she empowered. And so therefore I grew with that conscientiousness of being just talkative. But today, as an educator, as a parent, as a minister of the gospel, it serves me well. It becomes my very time. People ask me all the time, are you into drama? No, I'm into life. <laughs> I'm into life. Because see, I've understood that, that it has brought me into a greater ecological frame where wherever I am, I'm able to be. So therefore, it eliminates things like foolish, dotish, dunce, shy, Introvert. You are able to be what you are, wherever you are. That's not an English sense. And I, I trust today that we are hearing this very, very keenly so as to not to label our children. Let me end up here. Not to label our children. And I, 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 I want to be very careful about it because we label our children in, in terms of a, a, a comparative dynamic with somebody else that we don't know. You see what that child does? You see what this one do? He got a, a, a you get what, a D. Why are you comparing and bring, making the child feel that there is some kind of synonymity in terms of all of us being equal? Our equality has to do with the humanness being created in his image and likeness. But apart from that, we have been exposed so differently within our cultures and traditions that we are therefore differently able in terms of how we interpret life. And I want to see the need for that concept that across the lifespan, everybody's experiences are, is important. Is that to be are uh, are important for their social being and their personality, which has to do with their psychosocial performances. So, so what I had was my experiences from zero to three, all the way to six, nine, going up, continue to shape me. Continue. Yes, I'm alive. And, and you would, you would, <laughs> you would have to believe. Uh, you have to go back in your own mind to say something that happened to your three is affect you today, or and it may not be affect you negatively. It has impacted you so much that you behave a particular way as to continue progressing. Something happened to me at six or nine, you know, or twelve. These things, whether negative or positive, impact us in terms of how we behave. And it brings us into our entire life. So between zero and till death do you part, we understand that flavor and that flavor of where we are going. I, I trust today that we are really appreciating those contexts. Now, what, what, I, what I have to do is to tie this all in to those things we call developmental and intellectual disabilities. When you think that your child has a disability, because one, the development, and that is something we have to work with. Where the child had a, a deformed brain in terms of having lost blood or breathing problems, and so the child may have a smaller head or bigger head, or the child may have a lower, a, a, a less one arm lengthier or smaller than. We may have the dwarfness. There are certain developmental issues that are nature. Yes, some of them can be corrected, but that's a, a, a low percentile, but it's called needed. But there is something called nurture that helps that child to perform. So there are people who may have certain brain issues, uh, and we won't name them today, or they may have structure issues in terms of their fingers, or, or they're, they're very high. Those people could be so brilliant, as brilliant as if you think they're normal. There are other people with intellectual, uh, disabilities that we call ADHD, we call autism, uh, we call Down syndrome, all those. Again, if there is proper nurturing, you will not know the difference. Are you following me? Because the nurturing helps to bring that confidence and identity within your children that helps them to be who they are. But we, in our ignorance, we say, oh my gosh, my child, he's slow, you know, he's slow. Be careful. Hey. 
th that intellectualism can be challenged with your nurturing and allowing the child to work through that whole socio-economic and cultural spectrum that brings the child out of the confusion of who he is and understand look the, the formative learning is fine if you're not doing too good we have all the non-formative learning here at home i give you a structure for you to learn so there's no confusion as to who you are so let's get on the, the bandwagon let's begin to be more aware of how we are nurturing and to how to overcome these intellectual and development issues by how we establish the whole issue of cognitive learning how we bring thought into practice and cause people to children to develop through processes guarding and protecting them in terms of their learning let's use the fingers too let's point and say hey listen to my voice hey see my eyes look where i'm going and let's connect and let's see how that child develops i am sure you're going to be very surprised if you start to practice these few items and we could put that maybe on some blog and and, and you can read that again so i will see today that you get the information but today i want you to know your child is special you are special special plus special is very special don't be negative as to what you think is learning disability or something's wrong no it's how you nurture welcome your child enjoy your child and dr nair saying you are the beginning of your tomorrow <laughs>